Have you ever heard of the saying that goes, we cannot say the right thing to the wrong person, nor the wrong thing to the right person? Is there such a thing? Like, how about we train ourselves to say the right thing as much as possible and avoid to say the wrong thing as often as possible? So in this episode number 112, I'm going to share with you what to do and what not to do in three specific areas of your prospecting process. So stay tuned. Hey, hey, Thierry here from thierryvialexander.com. I help makeup artists, network marketers, and entrepreneurs create an effective presence online that helps you acquire the best qualified leads into your business so that you can monetize your brand much faster, easier, and while having fun along the way. In this episode number 112, I'm going to share with you the things to do and not to do in three specific areas that are part of your prospecting process. If you're new here, consider subscribing because each and every single week I do create a new video training as well as attach to it a PDF, a guide, a cheat sheet of some sort to empower you within your business in your own way. When it comes to communication, I believe that whatever we say is the right thing to say because anyhow, we always have a learning in any outcome. Plus, we cannot control what the other person is going to feel or think about what we're telling them. Therefore, saying the right thing to the right person is never really guaranteed. The thing we can work towards, however, in order for us to become better is to avoid saying certain things that are going to trigger certain behavior, such as ghosting and vague answers from people when we're asking them questions. So let's dive into the three specific areas that a lot of people are making common mistakes and so what not to do and what to do in those areas. The first place where people tend to make a common mistake is on the friend request area. There are a lot of people that are out there networking, going online, prospecting, and they go straight to the juggler. They send their, they put their website link all over the place and pitch people, tell people to buy, to uh, come here for buy one, get one free type of deal. It is really not what people like to actually go for. People love buying and spending money, yet they do dislike to be sold to. Your product, your services, your opportunity are no different to any other. However, it does not have to take forever before you are sending a friend request to somebody. In fact, I would definitely suggest to be as quick as possible. Let's say after a couple of message, messages back and forth within a group conversations that you have with that person, you can send them a friend request. The other thing I would definitely suggest is to send a private message along with the friend request so that you can introduce yourself and you can take the conversation back from where you left it off in the group. That message could be something along the line, hey, Joe, you nice connecting with you over in the, into the group XYZ. It was great uh, to connect over blank topic and I totally agree with you. I love, I just checked your profile and I love the fact that you live in New York. I live in New York as well. Something along those lines, right? Now, from one conversation to the other, it's going to vary. It's never going to be exactly the same. That is a template though that you can use and be reminding yourself with of what you send the person. Essentially, it is, hey, name, hello, name. Uh, nice connecting with you over into the group blank and you take the conversation from where you left it off in the group or you can start it from something that you've seen on their profile, a commonality, maybe a place you're living in, an activity or hobby that you are having in common. Perhaps they have some children, you do too. You find something that works and that makes you connect with that person for them to relate to you. In any case, this is not the time when you are sending your replicated website or your website or your offer or asking people to buy into you, your services, your opportunity. There is another place for it, which actually happens to be 
The second tip, it's in the second place, the invitation. This is where you are inviting people to take a look into what you've got going on. There's a way of doing this as well. And that is after a few back and forth messages, again, in the private inbox setting area. Once you have built a little bit more private rapport and you've asked a few questions, you've qualified them, you've, you've figured out you know, some of their needs, desires, wants, pain and struggles that they've expressed to you some, in some way, shape or form, you can then go back with a message inviting them that says something along the line. You know, based on what you told me that you wanted to learn, that you wanted to blank, learn on how to do makeup for yourself, learn how to prospect, to reduce your wrinkles, etc. I just happen to actually have a business that helps with blank and whatever they've expressed to you. If you're open to learn more about blank, then let me know and I will share some information with you, no problem. And if not, no worries. If yes, which is how going to happen most of the time because hey, who is not open to learn about a solution that is going to help them for their problem, whichever problem they may have. Now, what I would suggest is to, for, to set the follow-up time and date before sending your information. So that way you are almost guaranteed to have a closing phase that is going to happen. Otherwise, you might be struggling to get an answer whether they are interested or not in what you've been introducing them to. In any case, do not let go of your lead by telling them, let me know when you've actually reviewed the information and if you are interested or not. Set the follow up time and date so that you can actually put in their mind, condition them to the fact and prepare them that you are going to call them and connect with them in order to figure out where they are at. And for you, it means that you are more focused and also structured in what you have to do, when you have to do it and who to contact at what time. And as you know, each and every single week, I do bring to you a guide, a cheat sheet, a PDF, something of some sort that is there to help you, empower you in your own way within your business. This week, because we're talking about what to do, what not to do in certain areas of your prospecting processes, I brought to you my three easy step follow-up process, which we just talked about actually. So this three easy step is going to give you, as it says, three easy steps to to have an answer, to make sure that people are coming to your follow-up and they are actually giving you the answer, whether it's a yes or a no. That helped me to have people stopping ghosting me and not giving or giving me vague answer by using that, that strategy, that process, that three easy step follow-up process. So if you wanna get access to this, just click the yellow button below this video that will be sent automatically to your email box. And if you're anywhere on other places than the blog, you just need to go into the description section somewhere. You'll see the link that is going to take you back to my blog so that you can download from the big massive yellow button in below, below this video and that will come into your email box. Talking about follow-up, this is actually the third place where I want to mention what to do and what not to do so you have a better time and a better ratio of people turning up and giving you also the right and or giving you the answers that uh, will make you go in the direction, the right direction and have a clear answer. So if all done correctly, there's a massive chance that your prospect will turn up to the follow up meeting with you. Even if they do not, however, it is always easier to reschedule a follow up meeting that was already booked than chasing someone who's gone with your information and you didn't book any meeting prior right now the very common mistake that i even used to make myself in the follow-up process many years ago is to ask the question did you like it 
That type of question is an ended question that we call. That means we get a yes or a no answer. That is not going to get you very far because it brings you no information, just a yes or a no. I liked it or I didn't like it. The better question to ask for you to pull out more information so you know where to go, what direction, what they are more interested within your business is to ask, what did you like best about the information, about what you've watched, about what you've listened to, about what I've presented to you, about what I've shared with you? What did you like best? That is an open question, an open-ended question, meaning that they are going to think if you're introducing them to just the business side of your of your of your business the opportunity side of your business they're going to think okay is it the leadership is it the training is it the conversation plan is it the 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 business model that you are introducing me to that i really like what is it so you can talk about that if you're introducing them to the product side of your business they can tell you let's say you're in you're in skincare if they like the packaging, the anti-aging range, if they like whatever they like specifically. And even more so if you are at a stage where I was doing many years ago, I would not recommend to do that yet. If you are there where you are introducing them to both at the same time, business and the product side of your opportunity, then they will tell you, oh, I, I did like the, the product because XYZ or I did like the business because blank that is giving you clues on where to direct your conversation if they tell you that they like the anti-aging range and the fact that you are cruelty free all the benefit that is included in your in your product you are better lead with the product and they might become a client because they, they might not be interested into the business. Nothing stops you to say, and what did you think about the business? Then they'll say, oh yeah, I'm not really sure, I didn't know. So you are very clear now that actually it's the product and vice versa, okay, with the business, if they go, oh yeah, I really love the compensation plan. Okay, great, we're gonna talk about that first and inquire what they think about the product side. In conclusion, you, we know that you will never, we will never have control over the prospect's decision at the end of the day. Yet, we can definitely control the way we deliver the information, how we present it, as well as how we manage the overall process of the prospecting. And remember, I've got your back with the three easy step follow up process guide that is going to help you have more answers, quicker answers as well for people to not, you know, mess you out and about because you are in business, you're busy, you got to carry on and move on to the next person. You are better having a no than just chasing the person, not knowing, wandering and actually wasting your time with someone who's not interested. And equally, you want to go fast because success loves speed. And so when you are following up with people, you are going to have answers that are coming to you much faster as well. So I hope that helps. Let me know if did you get value out of this uh, video training? What was your biggest takeaway out of it? I'd love to get uh, what, what is it that you've taken from this training? And if you did like it, if you find value in it, feel free to share it with your fellow network marketers, entrepreneurs, makeup artists, whomever you believe could benefit from knowing the information of what we've shared today, what to do and what not to do in those three specific area. When sending a friend request to people on Facebook, how, what to do in the invitation of taking a look into your opportunity products or services and what not to do as well. And lastly, in the follow-up process, how to go about it, set it, and what to say and what not to say within that process so you get the best out of every single of those areas for you to have better chances to have people saying yes to your product and opportunity or and move quicker to the person you are going to introduce those 
to again and have more answers and conversations in your inbox. Question of the week. What part of the prospecting process do you find yourself being challenged with? Let me know in the comment section, what is it that you find challenging in the prospecting process? If there's anything I can help you with, send me a question, share with me, and I'll make sure to give you what I use, what I do, and help you out to make it better for yourself and get better results in your business. Thank you so much for tuning in. Love connecting with you each and every single week. This is a wrap, but come back next week. You'll have another new video training with a guide of some sort to empower you in your business again. You take care. This is a wrap. Bye-bye-bye.